Hello again folks, if you recall the other evening I put a poll up on YouTube asking you what you'd like to see more of on the channel and a few of you said you'd like to see more retro teardowns so I thought this evening we'd take a look at this vintage uh, sharp video camera it's the XC51 and it dates from the early 80s we've also got its associated video recorder the VC220N and yeah I thought we'd take a wee look at it uh, maybe tear down the camera I'm not going to bother tearing down the recorder because ultimately it's, it is just a video recorder um, but yeah, this is clearly an early home video camera system. Um, I don't know if it was ever used in a professional or semi-professional uh, environment, but yeah, certainly for the, the home user, this was one of the earliest uh, video recorders that you could, you know, record your, your home movies and, you know, family events, that kind of thing. And um, of course, it's quite bulky. You know, the, the technology at the time didn't allow for a, a handheld unit to have uh, the facility to record, you know, within the device itself. Um, of course, prior or after this, we had, um, you know, camcorders that had VHS cassettes built in, you know, the recorder built in, you know, it's high eight, eight millimeter. And of course, as we get on in time, we're into uh, DVD, Blu-ray recording direct to disc within the device. And of course, uh, as we get into the, the 21st century, you know, we're solid state type recorders that have either got a built in hard drive, you know, you know, flash device or solid state device and uh, or can take, you know, SD cards or that kind of thing but let's be honest um, other than sort of professional YouTubers and maybe some sort of the media journalists and stuff like that nobody really tends to use um, you know sort of commercially available recording devices for, for making videos everybody's mobile phone has got you know at least one camera some have got up to I think three or four cameras now and they took superb footage at 4k and you know the lenses that are attached to you know, from, from fairly decent manufacturers and, you know, they're absolutely perfect for recording most things. Um, so, yeah, rambling on slightly. Um, we'll take a look at the recorder first and I'll just show you around it. Now, um, this uh, the camera itself has a, a approximately two metres of uh, lead and that just uh, screws onto this uh, uh, multiple, con uh, multiple, I don't know, multi-plug type thing. I don't know, it's probably fairly proprietary i'd imagine but yeah it just screws on to the front of the recorder now the recorder itself um i laugh at the name compact uh, it must weigh about um i don't know two and a half three kilos it is fairly hefty and it's so heavy it comes with its own shoulder strap so you'd you'd literally hang this over your shoulder with the the lead connected now this particular recorder uses uh, VHSC. VHS stands for uh, what does it stand for again? Video Home System, if uh, my memory serves me well. And I'm sure that the the C uh, stands for Compact. Now um, I have an old VHS cassette here. Um, this is from the Jetstream Forty One rollout at Prestwick, uh, British Aerospace, up in Ayrshire, uh, where I'm from originally. Yeah, that's the, the sort of size of cassette. That um, you would you would probably last remember uh, when we before uh, DVD and Blu-ray, and yeah, the VHSC is essentially a compact version of this, and and indeed you could get um, adapters that you could take the cassette out of here. Sadly, I don't have one, uh, and basically plunk it into the adapter cassette, and that would go into your uh, VHS player under your TV and you know the lounge or whatever. Maybe even a big top loader like this. Do you remember those? Before the, the fancy ones where it popped out the front. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's the cassette it uses. Um, again, it was fairly standard. Everybody had one pretty much in the, the 80s and even into the, the mid-90s. I think VHS was still fairly popular. I think I remember buying my first uh, DVD in 2000. So yeah, it must have been right up into the, the 90s, even late 90s actually. Um, sorry, yeah, slight uh, tangent there, but there's our connector on the front, we've got our power button there and an external microphone input. Uh, the controls are under this sort of sliding uh, cover here, you've got record, stop and play and all that good stuff. And there's a little tracking knob that if you remember from your, your VHS players, you used to have to adjust to get the everything in sync and make sure it wasn't a fuzzy picture. We've got a little uh, tape counter on the right hand side there and the battery and due warning uh, 
indicator. So say for instance you had this, I don't know, outside in a vehicle overnight and it had been particularly cold. If you brought it into a building, you know, a household or a business uh, and, you know, it had a warm, damp air, um, of course, mist and dew is going to form on the lens and the optics. And I believe that this uh, had the facility to, you know, detect that and warn you that, that there's potentially going to be issues. On the side, we've got the video and audio in and out and a 12 volt DC uh, input jack. We've also got uh, a battery release mechanism here and this uh, uses this battery pack, it's a BT220N, uh, 12 volt at uh, 7 amp hours. Now uh, looking at it and the, the sort of size, I would imagine this uses 10 NICAD batteries. It doesn't actually tell you the chemistry uh, on on the, the case of this, uh, nor does it tell you in the box. Just bear with me just a moment before all this drops on the floor. I really should have prepped this. Um, it did actually come, I should have said, it actually came fully boxed and came with three battery packs. But yeah, there's nothing on the packaging to tell you the chemistry. Um, ah, wait a second. I didn't actually know this was in here. I'll then get it out. I got this from eBay. It cost me... Believe it or not, in clean delivery, nine quid, which is a bit of a bargain. Um, does it tell us? No, it doesn't. Unusual that, because I, I, maybe it was uh, predates the requirement to to tell you about those types of things. I don't know. Of course, in the in the nineteen eighties, um, very little sort of stuff like this was ever recycled. Um, so it probably just. Uh, required you to once it was expired it is a rechargeable pack but once it was uh, expired you probably just uh, chucked it in the landfill to be honest which is a bit sad really but there we go that is the that's the recorder and if you just want a quick look inside there you've got your tape heads that's that uh, silver so, uh, um, oh I don't know how you describe that that silver thing at the back with the lines on that's the pickup heads and you can see all the sort of pulleys and guides where it, it drags the tape in and to, to tension it and of course feed it at the required speed so that you, you can record and, and replay the video at a suitable rate ok right so we'll get that out of the way I'll put it down there try not to drop it and we'll take a look at the camera now so yeah, here it is. It's this is actually fairly light. It's not too heavy at all. There we go. Sati, Saticon, Saticon, uh, color video camera. It's got a TV zoom lens. I'll take that off, and then you can have a, a wee look in there. You can see there's some sort of shutter in there. Um, and you've got a, you know, a control here for the the zoom. Uh, the focus can't be adjusted, but you can zoom in and out. Uh, on the top, we've got a little horseshoe mount here, and we've got this uh, little microphone in the front here, which I only uh, found out the other day when I was looking at it, actually unplugged. So you could essentially have a, an external microphone fitted onto the horseshoe, and uh, yeah, that, that uh, the lead from that would, would plug in there. So yeah, it's an interesting little design feature. The um, handle itself has uh, a folding uh, facility so you know to make it more compact um, and there's our uh, record button here which is, is simply a uh, latching switch you know on and off for your, for your recording and of course that would just uh, make a circuit you know make the circuit and uh, tell the recorder to, to start recording and then of course when it released it, when it was released uh, of course it would stop recording a um, color compensator we've got a switch here i'm not quite sure where that is and then we've got the eyepiece here which is just this big piece of rubber there uh, thing uh, attached on here and i believe this will probably have a cathode ray tube uh, viewfinder um, but yeah we'll, we'll have a look at it we'll at least try and get into it i've not attempted it but we'll we'll have a look there's a screw there there's a screw there and not anywhere else so yeah we'll give it a bash and uh, see if we can get inside it oh we've got a screw in the handle there as well but hopefully that will just come off in one piece because i imagine there'll be lots of springs and bits and bobs in so let's uh take that out there in fact does this come off yeah get rid of the eyepiece Let's 
put those to one side. Alright, so it is one to open up, but looking at that, I think this is going to be integral to holding it all together. Let me just see if I can... Ah, that's just rubber. There we go. That's bound to be how we get into it. So... Have any of you ever used one of these things? I had something similar in the 80s. Okay, so that, that comes off there. Now we're getting someone out. Does that need to be unplugged? No, that's just a... Ah, uh, but you this whole shoe up just holding it. Ah, right. I think we're in. Oh, that switch is in the way. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I can just unplug that by the looks of things. Yeah, that's just the, it looks like a two and a half mil mono uh, jack there for the microphone. But we'll pop that back in there. And here's, well, here's one side of the gubbins. Um, got some sort of, um, looks like some sort of adjustable, presumably caps, little trimmer caps or something like that. I've never seen, uh, is it single in line? It looks like a single in line package with little trimmer caps or possible, uh, you know, just little, possibly just pots or something. Um, yeah, there's a, a tripod mount and that's pretty much it. So shall we try and take this off? Even Well, of course we will. Um, there's an interesting little point you might not know. A lot of manufacturers, actually pretty much the Japanese, I think are the only people have really seen it. Sony do it and other uh, companies like Sharp and JVC. Um, they will actually mark on silk screens and indeed in some, some of the, the mouldings and the plastics, actually the screws, that, the, sorry, the screws that you're required to take out to release something. You can see there's two screws here that don't have any markings, but this one here, this one here, and this one here all have a little screw, sort of silk screen on there. And I would imagine, if I was a betting man, that if we take those three screws out, whoops, then, uh, then this board will, will release. And I'll tell you what, top tip, um, pick the orientation of the device. So I'm doing it with the lens and uh, lens to the right and the handle to the the bottom. And I'll just lay out the screws in the location where they came out of just so I know where to put them back in uh, when I'm putting them back together. Might be teaching to suck eggs there, but it's, oh, well, oh this one's, this one's threaded. Or stripped, I should say. Um, what do we see? Yeah, it just uh, helps you when you're assembling it. So yeah, like I say, I might be teaching you to suck eggs, but it's a little thing that I do. This uh, screw, I don't know if you heard me there, but this screw appears to be stripped. So uh, that's another top tip. If you do get a, a screw that's uh, stripped or a thread that's stripped, just a uh, little side, uh, pair of side cutters underneath. Uh, grab the head of it and then just screw it and pull it out as you uh, as is unscrewing. You don't need an electric screwdriver uh, to do that. So. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so, of course, if you're going to be doing this, don't have it powered up because this does use a cathode ray tube and, uh, you know, th there are high voltages potentially present. I don't see any massive capacitors that are going to store any charge, but, uh, yeah, it's always, you know, worth leaving it for a while before you start stripping something like this down. So, um, I'm by no means an expert, as you well know, but let's just have a quick look inside here and see what we can see. So, we've got the, the lens assembly here, which is connected onto this cathode ray tube. Now, um, a cathode ray tube, as you know, is a, is a, a vacuum tube that uses uh, an electromagnet to steer an electron beam. The actual process of that, detecting a picture and, you know, transmitting it, I do not know how it works. Um, I have tried in the past to understand it, but I, I get how it scans an electron beam that lights up a, you know, a phosphorus coating on the inside of a, 
you know a tv or a computer monitor but the actual process of uh, getting an image uh, and into a piece of equipment is is beyond me i don't I, I don't fully understand it if you do understand it and could explain it in layman's terms by all means pop it in the comment down below and i'll pin the comment to the top for anybody that wishes to to read it um but yeah aside from that there's the the connector on there and it just looks like a standard uh, cathode ray tube connector you get on a normal crt monitor and um, we've got a little appears to be like a sort of actuator or a solenoid and presumably that's to open up the shutter so light can get into the the tube um, and we've got our viewfinder here now this is all sort of attached together so i don't want to pull it apart too much because I, I would actually like to keep this device because it does actually function um but yeah we, they've got the tube there and that is the the cathode ray tube which will be in here really compact one for the viewfinder i don't think it will be any other technology other than a, a small crt for that viewfinder as i don't think you know it really exists at that point you know lcds were very much in their infancy or you know that lcd type displays were very much in their infancy so yeah more than likely cathode ray tube in there as well um on to the actual board itself we've actually got a, a glass fuse in there uh, a one amp fuse um don't know why that would be inside there uh, it's not obviously user serviceable by the looks of things but there is a fuse there um and of course all the the, the video that or the the you know the the signal from the tube would be in here and get processed and then we've got some sort of RF shielded uh, can here that's going to be doing almost like a, a modulator you get in an old uh, UHF TV but that's going to be taking that signal processing it and putting it out on the, the lead getting into that video recorder um, and yeah there's a simple switch that, that turns it on and off so all in all I don't suppose it's very interesting inside it's probably much as what you'd expect um it's just a shame i don't fully understand how the crt works in that in, in this uh, sort of arrangement but the actual function of the you know the cathode ray tube and how it works i imagine is a, a very similar beast to the to the actual the monitors and, and tvs of the of days gone so yeah that's inside the camera and what time are we on 17 minutes i'll not tear down the i'll not tear down the recorder um at this point i mean if by all means if if anybody would like to see inside the recorder uh, pop down in the comments below and I'll, I'll i'll maybe do a separate video but there we go that was the sharp xc51 uh color video camera um I don't suppose it was particularly interesting, but hopefully you enjoyed watching it and just seeing what was inside this and maybe even just to see a piece of equipment you didn't know ever existed. But um, as always, if you enjoyed the video, give me the thumbs up. If you thought it was a load of rubbish, give me the thumbs down. Pop any comments in the comments below uh, if you like to. And if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head down here to subscribe. I should say the competition uh, time, the double competition time is still open. Uh, so by all means, uh, check my last video. In fact, I'll pop it here if you haven't seen it. And then you can go over to my Facebook page and uh, do this stuff. And you could be in with a chance of winning a slightly more modern uh, video recording device. Uh, beggar's belief to think that this records, you know, probably 10 times the resolution and it uh, stores 10 times the amount of video on something you know a tenth of the size it's crazy anyway again rambling on thanks very much for watching as always take care of yourselves and all the best